Hello and welcome to Hive Live. We're bringing you all the build-up to today's three o'clock kickoff as Watford take on Leeds United at Ellen Road. There's lots on the way in the next 45 minutes or so. We're going to be hearing from head coach Cisco Munoff as well as from Ben Foster. We've got a special feature on the Hornets left back Danny Rose and we'll be taking a detailed look at today's opposition. The Hornets are looking to get their second away win of the Premier League campaign against Marcelo Bielsa's Leeds United. Welcome to Hive Live. Good afternoon. Welcome along to Hive Live, another day in the Premier League for Watford as we head to Ellen Road to take on Leeds United. The next 45 minutes, lots of build-up to come for you. But as always, we're joined by the one and only Mr Tommy Mooney. Tommy, how are you? Very well. Good week? It's been a busy week. Probably the most busiest week I've had in 18 months or something like that. So. Nice. Bit of golf? Plenty of golf played in a two-day comp and then another game yesterday. Yeah, a couple nice. of games of football on Monday. Not playing, watching. Yeah. So a busy week. Busy week. And the Bond film last night as well. And the Bond, yeah, finished in the Bond film. Yeah. Obviously, we won't tell everybody. We else. won't. There's going to be no spoilers. Don't panic. <laughs> Me and Tommy both saw it last night. We're not going to ruin it for you because uh, there's way more important things to chat about. And of course, it is, of course, Watford we're going to be talking about plenty of on today's show. Um, let's kick things off by just looking back to last week. A little bit of reflection on that Newcastle game uh, was, of course, here at Vicarage Road. Classic game of two halves, really, wasn't it? It's still a week later. I still don't know how it finished, how it did. Could have been either either team could have ran away with it. You know, Newcastle had so many chances in the first half, missed chances, and then Watford in the second. So I think it, on reflection, a point's a, a, a fair result, but both managers were, were disappointed with the way how it happened. And will that be a valuable lesson learned with taking those chances? Because you've got to do that in the Premier League. You do have to take the chances, but I think the pleasing thing was we really went at Newcastle in the second half. We opened up a little bit, changed the shape, which seemed to suit us, particularly against Newcastle. Um, and you know, we had endless opportunities to, to, to win the game, but then in the, in the closing minutes, Newcastle should have won it. So I think yeah, a week later, a point of fair reflection. And I guess it was one of those games as well, wasn't it? The Josh King goal, um, disallowed for offside. We, the week before we went to VAR and obviously it was given as a goal, uh, of course against Norwich, but well, this one weren't so lucky with the offside on that one. Yeah, I think it, most people would have known uh, that it was had a chance of being offside. You know, I, I always say it, you look at how the distance between the strikers and the attackers and it was too big a distance for him not to have been offside. But disappointing for, for Josh because, again, he worked really, really hard and just needs that first goal. No, massively. Um, we got a nice glimpse of uh, Ozan Tufan as well. Uh, replaced Tom Cleverley in that one. Made a big impact on his Premier League debut. Impressed with what you saw? He's very comfortable in possession of the ball. Uh, I think, he, obviously, the fitness levels are going to be tough for him in this, in this league. Uh, but hopefully that, that comes quicker uh, rather than later. And yeah, in possession of the ball, he's very, very comfortable and confident with it. Um, it's just finding a place for him in the team. And just finally on last week, obviously going to go behind, getting back into the game as well. Um, good character to do that. It's good to see a Watford side, you know, that are going to come back when they're put in those difficult situations. I think it, the, a big plus is seeing them come off the pitch and they're disappointed with a point. And that's something that, that you, will stand them in good stead in, in future games. I think the key to it is attacking. When they attack, they're a dangerous, very, very dangerous team. We've got to shore it up at the back a little bit. Um, to give the, the, the strikers opportunities to get winning goals. But yeah, I think it, there's an awful lot of positives from last week's game. Perfect. Um, let's talk defensively because let's talk about Danny Rose. Um, he's coming to the Watford side this summer, had a good game against Newcastle, performed well against Norwich as well. Um, what are your first initial thoughts of him coming into that side? Yeah, I think it, obviously he's, play, he's pl played more games at, at Newcastle than he has in Tottenham in the last two years. So him coming into the team, I think he's, he, since he's come in, I've been really impressed. You know, it's, a, it's really tough to, to go six months without playing football, without a, a longer spell than that. So I think he's been really, real big positive coming in and his performances have been excellent. And, you know, it's, it's not that long ago he was a top, top left back and playing for England. So, yeah, he's a, he's a big signing and I think his performances have showed what a really good player he is. Does that 
like you mentioned, of fact, not playing for even for six months is difficult. Does that just show the, the level of quality that he has as a player? The fact that after all that time, he can just come in and, and we can see those glimpses straight away? Yeah, I don't think you lose your quality. You just lose the feel for the game and the touch. And obviously, it, it's really difficult mentally if you're, not, if you're not playing week in, week out. So he's come through that um, and now he's back playing football and you know, hopefully we, we see the best of him. Now defensively, of course, the left-back and the right-back position are, are critical. You know, can they stop crosses getting in? Can they, can they make a real impact to stop that, those attacks coming forward, especially if you're, if you're playing high? Um, left-back's been a position that maybe we've struggled with in the last kind of few seasons. Like, obviously, incredibly important that that position is, is shored up. It's a, it's a vital position on the pitch. Yeah, it's one of those... Worked in recruitment, I know how difficult it is to find a really good left-back. Um, and uh, like you say, at both sides, and in Danny Rose, you get real good quality in, in the cross. So the attacking players like the way he crosses the ball because he does it early. And on the on the flip side of that, Kiko Feminia, his relationship with, with Ismail Assar has been excellent going forward and defensively. So two two real vital spots in the team, particularly when you think of, of all of the attacking talent that is that is in the Premier League in wide areas. So, yeah, there'll be two real big positions for us this season. Mm. Off the pitch as well, because it's always important when a player comes in that they, they fit in off the pitch and become part of that, that dressing room. Um, a player of Danny's quality, that's just only going to enhance the dressing room, isn't it? And enhance it on the training pitch as well when you've got a player with that much experience that's been in some big dressing rooms. That's only going to help Watford. I think a lot of the young players will look up to him because they'll remember him in his prime. Um, and that's really important. I think from Danny's point of view, geographically, it helps because he hasn't had to move house. That's always a big thing for, for a player. It, that prolongs that, that initiation process, really. So doing that is, is better for him. Um, and obviously traveling to the training ground is, is comfortable. So that makes him settle in quicker and then he can pass on his wealth of experience and, and ability to all players in the dressing room, not just the younger players. I think there'll be a lot looking up to him. Yeah, massively. And uh, say a big impact on the side already. So we'll definitely see how he uh, makes more of an impact throughout the season as we go on. Right, there's plenty of action coming your way today because, yes, the men's team are away at Ellen Road taking on Leeds United, but the women are playing here at Vicarage Road this afternoon. It's a two o'clock kickoff. They're taking on Charlton Ath. Athletic. It's going to be a cracking game. Uh, Tommy's going to be trying to keep across both those games, as will I as well. And if you want to follow the Watford FC women on social media, you can do that. Uh, it's Watford FC women on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and on YouTube there as well. Um, Tommy, you're going to be trying to keep across both as well. What's the plan of action? I'm going to be up in the, up in the gantry, I think, for the game, uh, for the women's game. You're going to be keeping an eye on the men's game. I've got a bit of everything today. I'll, I'll definitely <laughs> get the first half of, of the women's game and then... Uh, I'll watch the, the game at Elland Road and then I'll also, my son's playing in the FA Cup today so I'll have that on the radio and my headphones so I'll, I'll be footballed out by the time five o'clock comes around. <laughs> now it's going to be a good day isn't it? Um, obviously the women playing here at Vicarage Road, the men at Elland Road, um, it's fantastic to see the women playing again here at Vicarage Road, they've got another game coming up at the end of the month as well here. Um, playing in big stadiums it's a special feeling and we'll talk about the men as well playing at Ellen Road in just a second but for the women to play here at Vicarage Road it's, it's a ground you know well um, a real special occasion once again and the fans are going to be here as well coming to support them too. I think it's great that they play at Vicarage Road they'll certainly get there'll be more more supporters in attendance and playing on the Vicarage Road surface is often talked about but just just to be in the stadium I think that's the key to the women's game progressing because you know, more people will come and watch it. It's more heavily televised. So I think that's the key to raising the profile to the game and, and you know, for the, for the club to, to have more games here is, can only be a positive thing. Must be their second game here as well because they played Liverpool in their first game. So obviously they're getting used to the conditions and, and the pitch and everything as well, which is great. Um, let's talk Ellen Road because that's where uh, the men's team are heading to this afternoon. An incredibly special ground. It can be quite intimidating to go to at times. So you've played there on a few occasions. I've played there in three different divisions, obviously during Leeds' demise and you know, as I got older I went down the league. So yeah, I played there for the, in the Premier League for Watford in the Championship and then in my last season in England I played there in League One with Walsall when Fabian Delph was just coming into the team and he was the first one to call me a has-been on the pitch. <sighs> So that got to hurt, which, right? <laughs> to be to be honest, I got used to it <laughs> at, at the end of my career. I was always a quick retort. It's better to have been a has been than a never been. Very true. No, that's very true. And what's it like as a grounds player? 
always intimidating in whatever league it was normally always full um so really tough but then you know under Bielsa now it's it's very very different it's a tough task because they work extremely hard there'll be a good uh, atmosphere in the stadium there always is I'm sure Watford will have fulfilled their allocation so it, it's one of those places where you need to start well because you, you don't want that Leeds crowd singing and, and, and enjoying the game and they'll only enjoy it if they're winning the Leeds fans that's how they are and, and it's a great atmosphere to play in the players will love it today yeah there'll be a lot of pressure on Leeds as well because they need some points over still not one again we'll talk about Leeds United very shortly but of course uh, as I mentioned men away the women are at home it's a two o'clock kickoff here at Vicarage Road for the women they've got some great fixtures on the way as well coming up in the next few weeks so uh, if you're not coming down to today's game don't miss it because they are next playing here at Vicarage Road on the 31st of October two o'clock kickoff as they take on Crystal Palace but plenty of action before that as well if you're following them on the road in the women's championship they've got the London City Lionesses on the 10th of October a two o'clock kickoff for that one and then they play in the Continental League Cup versus Coventry United another away fixture on the 13th that one is a 745 kickoff if you want to get tickets for that one Watford FC uh, tickets.watfordfc.com is where you can get your tickets for that but of course they're at Vicarage Road today and again on Sunday the 31st of October okay so that's a two o'clock kickoff here at Vicarage Road but as we mentioned three o'clock kickoff in the Premier League today uh, we'll see Watford take on Leeds United now earlier on this week uh, we called up with Ben Foster and here's what he had to say has your role changed at Watford because you just said there about being more experienced now and you've kind of not been in the team as much this year because of injury Dan Backman's been in you're back in the team at the moment but have you felt your role change within the dressing room as well yeah for sure I think the the beauty of being an experienced player is that when like I say when because I, I, you've got to remember as well over the last I think it was the between 2010 and 2020 I think I was the third most played Premier League player in the whole of the Premier League I, I made the most appearances so I have spent the last best part of the last sort of 10-15 years playing first team football being that mm. first choice goalkeeper so when you're out of the team and you're sat, sat on the bench that would like I say that's the first time that's happened to me in like near, near on 15 years um, so it's a new experience for me but the, the beauty of being an older player, like I say, is you, you learn that you eventually this will come. It's got to come. It's inevitable. It'll happen to everybody. So I have then got to twist my role from not being that first choice goalkeeper to being, like I said earlier, a cheerleader. I have to be a cheerleader at this point. I have to put my ego aside. I have to put everything. And you have to get behind the goalkeeper. You have to get behind the, the other team, the other player, sorry, and help them out as much as you can. And I'm, I found it, a, not, I'd say I found it quite easy, to be fair, but it's... It's only comes from being experienced, but yeah, I've, I've got to switch my roles that way and then just help everybody out as much as I possibly can. Well, there we go. Some interesting thoughts there from Ben Foster about changing position and the sense of, not so from a goalkeeper, but from your role within the side. Um, let's ask you about that question. You obviously joked a minute ago about Delph calling you a has-been. Um, as you got towards that kind of twilight years of a career, did you find personally that your role changed? Uh, I, I don't think so, because I, I always played in, in the teams that I was I think it, I, I, it's it's really nice for me to see Ben because Ben and I played together at Stoke when he was 18 year old breaking into the to first team football so it, it, it's good to see it makes me feel really old but it's, <laughs> it's really good to see Ben talk like that because I know how he is behind the scenes and it's great for him and and the likes of Daniel Backman as well to have Ben's um, knowledge and personality in the background but Ben will also want to play so when he's when he comes into the team like he has done he'll want to be on top form because that's how he is he's a pro a top pro you don't get to be, to play the amount of games he has like he says in the interview without being a really good pro um, and half of your job as a senior pro is what happens on a daily basis in the training ground problems that you've got to sort out so that the manager doesn't have to get involved or the head coach doesn't have to get involved and also on a match day where there's certain things that some younger players might be struggling to deal with, the older players can, can help immediately because they've seen it time and time again. So that, that's a huge part, not just for Ben, but for all of the senior players. And it's also getting everybody to stand up and be counted. It doesn't matter whether you're 18 or 38, you're in that team because of your ability and the, the head coach or the manager thinks that you can help win three points on that day. So 
that's part of the battle and it's continuous for a senior mm. pro but i loved it i thrived on it i liked responsibility as does ben and the other senior pros that that we have and, and uh, have had yeah and the good news is ben is far off from being a has been as well so if anyone tries to throw that one at him they can definitely keep themselves quiet because he is definitely not anywhere near that so i say good to see him uh, still making such a positive impact on the fielders and off the pitch as well right let's start talking about today's match shall we because we're taking on leeds united now tommy it's not been the best of starts for them 18th in the premier league um they've had a difficult start out of their six games they're yet to win a game um this isn't the leeds united we were used to over the last few seasons no i think it's one of those where it, the bielsa factor since he's come to the club and the success that he's had um, it, quite similar to, to the way that Sheffield United had success when they first came into the, the, the Premier League and then they struggled with it two or three seasons in it's it, if there's no changes around things become, be, can become quite mundane at the training ground and, and perhaps they're in that little period where they're struggling with that because whatever however hard you made to work in the training ground if you're winning games you'll keep doing it the test is when you're not winning games and they've only had three draws this season you wouldn't expect them to see that see them in the position that they're in but nevertheless they are so it's the, probably the first time under Bielsa that they've not had that winning dressing room week, week in week out um, and it's how the players cope with that it's a big part of the game and I think you know they'll see it today we talked about uh, about last week it, the promoted teams are the ones where teams think we can win this today so they'll be looking for their first win today but we also know that, that we'll have the opportunity to counter-attack today because of the lead style of play and we're really good at counter-attacking so you know things could could fall for us today mm, that style of play is incredibly interesting is let's take a look at um marco bielsa's premier league stats since he's been manager because i think it's a really interesting graphic to look at especially when you look at uh, how they're doing so this is his career uh, in total for all the teams that he's uh, managed he's played at 715 games won 330 of those so he's a serial winner he likes to win games um, let's have a look at his premier league record now um, because i think this is the interesting one we especially when we talk about their style of play as well because they do like to play that attacking football tommy and it does mean that you're going to get chances it does, yes, because they attack with probably eight players, where most it will split it with six and four. They'll attack with eight players. So that obviously sets up the opportunity to, to counter-attack them. And defensively, they're not the strongest. We talked about Newcastle last week, not strong defensively. You could argue that defensively is not our strongest part of the team. But certainly with, with Leeds and you know the, the success that they've had previously, they've managed to deal with that this season they're really struggling yeah no massive when you look at that that record a win percentage of 41 percent you now look at how they're starting this season already after those six games still yet to get a win in the bag um the style that they play how, how would you kind of describe that it's very attacking it's very open it's hard it's fast paced isn't it that that's, must be quite intense as a player to play in that system week in week out in the Premier League yeah it's, it's almost like a Buccaneer style isn't it they, they just want to score goals they don't it's like I played for Barry Fry when I was a young player and he would be, he would always say I don't mind the opposition scoring three as, we, as long as we score four I don't think Bielsa is as sim simple as that Barry was quite open with with the way he played but Bielsa has set a set regime set statistics that all the players have to to, to adhere to and it is, it's a tough ask for them. You know, I think a lot of his players went on record and said that they, they'd be training two and three times a day. He has all the players at the training ground for a sleep on the afternoon between training sessions. That's intense. And like I say, when you're winning, you, you'll do whatever, whatever it takes. But when you're losing, players start to question things. And I think that that's probably what's happening at the moment. They are playing well in games. They're just conceding too many goals. Yeah, they definitely aren't they? That first game against Manchester United, 5-1. I don't think anyone saw that result coming for them as well. And then draws as well against Newcastle, Everton and Burnley. They're games that they won this time last year. Well, particularly when Burnley and Newcastle are, are really struggling. Everton could go top of the table today. So, you know, that's, that's not necessarily a bad point against Everton. But the, again, they'll see um, against a newly promoted team at home as Watford are today. Uh, they'll see that as an opportunity so they'll be hoping to turn it round um, obviously sooner rather than later and they'll want it to do, to do it today. Yeah, you obviously mentioned that intensity of Bielsa 
as, as a coach. Is that something you would have enjoyed playing under or was that a bit too full on for you? No, I, I always, uh, the successful managers that, that, that I had were the, the intense ones. You know, I had two promotions under Graham Taylor, very intense, but in a different way to, to Bielsa. You had to buy into his, his theory and his ethos. And if you did that, he trusted you and you trusted him. Steve Bruce, very, very similar, um, although different man management styles. So, yeah, I think I played for Tony Pulis, who <laughs> at Stoke with Ben. Um, very, very different types of managers, but it does take take all sorts. Bielsa is very, very different. I think the, the, the biggest hurdle for me with Bielsa is the language barrier. I'm sure he speaks a little bit more English than he, he does yeah. to, to the media, but that's got to be difficult with with uh, with players that are predominantly British. And, you know, that, that language barrier can't, can't help an awful lot. No, it certainly can't. Talking of the language barrier, uh, let's get the pre-match thoughts of Marcelo Bielsa via his interpreter. Bueno, es un equipo eh, muy aguerrido. It's a, uh, a solid team. Es un equipo combativo. They're combative. Con jugadores de experiencia. With players of experience. Eh, que fundamentalmente eh, complican la, el desarrollo del juego del rival. That fundamentally complicate the development of, of, of the play of, of the opponent. Y tienen atacantes eh, veloces, sorpresivos. And they have uh, forwards who are, are quick, who, are, who can surprise you. Que le dan un complemento eh, a, al aspecto defensivo del equipo con, con buena profundidad. Uh, they, they give a good complement to the defensive aspect by um, asking him behind. There we go, the thoughts there of Marcelo Bielsa. I always wonder when the interview's done through an interpreter, if it's the interpreter just saying what they want. <laughs> I'm not bilingual, I, only, I struggle with English at the best of the time. You just wonder, they just make it up as they go along. I think that's, that's the issue. That's, that, that's the, the, the gap that they have. And if it's exactly the same at the training ground, then, then that makes it even more difficult because it's not the, the manager's voice that they're listening to, it's the interpreter's. So that can only complicate things. But yeah, I think... It, it, it's been, it's been difficult for them. They've had injuries, Leeds. They, they have injuries again today. But say I played golf with a couple of Leeds supporters through the week and they they say that Rafinha and Lorente are their two players. Everybody else is, is struggling with form. So, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those where they have to turn it around and they have to turn it around quick or, or then they'll be looking at the wrong end of the table for too long. Hopefully they're not going to turn it around today. That's the plan. They're going to stay playing as they are for today. Um, but, you know, you've mentioned they're obviously playing for, for Graham Taylor and Tony Pulis, that, that intense kind of manager. How do you get out of that rut? Because I think that's the difficult element, isn't it? Like you said, if you're, it's intense training, but you're winning, it's all right. But when you're not, it's tough. What do they have to do to get out of that rut? I think I was, I was always worked under the premise that the harder you work, the luckier you get. And you do stay on the training ground longer when you're in a, a, a losing streak or you, things are not going well for you. And sometimes that affects you in, in a negative way because you're tired coming to the, to the match days. But they've had, they've had three draws. So have other teams at the bottoms. You know, Burnley, Newcastle struggling. Wolves are struggling. So there's other teams. And it's, yes, while we're six, seven games in, um, I think the flip side of that is for, for Watford today, we can get to 10 points before the international break. And I think that's a really positive start to the season. So that's, that's the key to it for me. Watford have to get up on the front foot and put Leeds in, in, in trouble and make them second guess themselves. Well, fingers crossed that's how it's going to pan out today. Uh, so Watford are on the road today, but they are back in action here at Vicarage Road. Uh, Next weekend, 16th of October, uh, not next weekend, the weekend after, uh, Watford versus Liverpool, 12.30 kickoff. If you want to get yourself along to that one, tickets.watfordfc.com, Liverpool, the next visitors here. Uh, also, as we mentioned already, the upcoming fixtures for the women's side, they're next in action, Vicarage Road on Sunday, the 13th of October. That is also a two o'clock kickoff for that one. And you see just before that, some games on the road away if you're going to support the women at those games. Same website, tickets.watfordfc.com.
Com. And it's an exciting day today, Tommy. You'll like this one because uh, it's the first time we're wearing the third kit away at Ellen Road. Uh, you can get yours if you're watching this, of course, on YouTube. You can get the link below and you could get your hands on that nice new green kit. Tommy, that's a bit of you in it. I like that. I do. I like that third kit. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it today. Hopefully it's a lucky omen and we get three points. Fingers crossed. Did you ever have a favourite kit? Playing for Watford? It's a bizarre question, I know, but it's a good pub uh, question, isn't it? Favourite kit of all time? It's a question often asked, and my answer is always, as long as it had the black shorts and black socks with the yellow that, top. You're the black shorts and black socks kind of yeah. guy. Yeah, even though we had great success in red, yeah. I, I just preferred them. I think it's because it's my, the first kit when I joined Watford in 94 was was a Hummel kit with black shorts, black socks. So. Nice. You still got that kit? I've got a, my shirt in a, in a frame, yeah. I don't have the shorts and socks, so I can't be that keen on them, can I? <laughs> <laughs> but you never put those in a frame anyway. No, you don't. That'd be interesting to do the full kit anyway. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so make sure you get your hands on that kit if you like it. It's an absolute cracker, that one, that green there with a bit of gold on it as well. Absolutely love it. Okay, uh, let's return our attention back to the action here at Vicarage Road today, because as we mentioned, the women are in action in that two o'clock kickoff versus Charlton. Now, Yelena Priest has been having a cracking season so far, but behind the scenes, it's been a difficult time for her and her family. Let's hear her story. Could you just explain for those who might not be aware uh, what Theo's journey is all about? Yeah, so um, early July this year, um, we got the very hard news that um, my little brother Theo, who was free at the time, um, was diagnosed with leukemia, um, specifically acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL. What treatments are available for those who have ALL? Theo is on like a three year plan of treatment. It involves different types of chemos, um, steroids, which come along with an endless list of side effects. It is crazy to think that in the last 20 years, only four drugs have been developed, um, which is a concern with the increase of the amount of children who are being diagnosed with leukemia. And I wear the yellow ribbon to represent childhood cancers. Your teammates and plenty of others within the football women community have shown their support. How pleased it's been to see the levels of support. Yeah, honestly, um, to be honest, I don't know where we'd be myself and as a family without everyone's support. Um, and then the club have been amazing and football really is my outlet. On Saturday, a raffle will be raising money for children with cancer. Can you just explain the good work that that charity does? Yeah, so Cancer Research, who everyone knows about, uh, spent £450 million on adult cancers, but only £13 million went to childhood cancers. More needs to go into finding kinder treatments, which is what this charity does a lot. For those who are listening to this and want to help, what's the best thing that they can do? Donating blood. So I'd say if you're eligible, please look into it. To a little pinch of and a scratch to you know save a child's life or an adult's life um, another thing as well obviously buy tickets for the raffle really help out um, a great charity in children with cancer uk um, and also there's a gofundme page which some of that money is going to go towards um, a trip for theo after the three years some of that money will also go to some charities that help us along the way. You know, the money will also go to that as well. Well, there we go. Um, an incredible story there. And if you want to get behind uh, Yelena and the family and give them lots of support, if you're watching this on your way to the women's game today, please get yourself a raffle ticket. And there's a link to the GoFundMe page on here as well. And uh, wishing all the best wishes to Yelena and to her brother Theo as well and their family at the moment. Um, Tommy, something I thought that was quite poignant that Yelena said, and that was, of course, as we saw last year, the, the Watford family and the football family coming together. And, and that's just vital. It's so special, that community spirit between teammates, between the club. It makes difficult times, doesn't make it easier, but it just makes it that little bit more bearable. Yeah, I think whether it comes from the, the, the women's team, the men's team, whether it's the supporters, you know, the club have uh, so, so many different ways that they're, that, that they're trying to help the, as many people as they can. If they're involved the players, current players, ex-players, if it can just help a couple of people. I know I made an awful lot of phone calls um, and, uh, and appearances and I actually got to, to meet two guys at Vicarage Road that I'd made a call to last week. So yeah, any, any one of those, those things that the club can put on can only help. So I think it's a, a massive and shows the family club that I was brought into many, many years ago. 
It certainly does. So remember, of course, that GoFundMe page link is at the bottom of this page here. And if you're coming to the game and you're watching this on the way to the women's game today, please get involved with the raffle. Now, of course, uh, we love to get you involved with everything here at Vicarage Road, as always, and especially on Hive Live, because it is time to look at the Goal of the Month Award for September. The winner is picked by you. It's voted by you. We'll see if uh, your winner matches up with what Tommy thinks uh, very shortly. But first of all, here are the contenders. moment give it on review contenders for goal of the month for September. Tommy, if you had to pick one, which would it be? I always like a right wing cross with it, with a header. So I think I'd go Emmanuel Dennis or perhaps Sars header at the back post last week against Newcastle. OK, well, I can reveal that the September goal of the month is Emmanuel Dennis for his uh, goal two weeks ago against Norwich City at Carrow Road. And to be fair, I think it deserved it just for the celebration. We spoke about this <laughs> after the match saying, did you have celebrations like that? But I think the backflips are just as impressive as the goal. Yeah, I, I, my back's hurting watching him <laughs> watching him do that. I think I might have made the header, but I certainly wouldn't have made the celebration. Oh, love that. OK, uh, so that is your goal of the month. Uh, time now for the Player of the Month Award. Uh, here are your contenders. Josh King cleverly cuts the ball back. Nobody with him, what? Eight, ten yards of it. But his life is hard. But it gets better when you grind smart. Here comes the corner. And headed into the face. And Watford have their first goal from a set piece. Good connection with me as well because he gave him three now in two games. Only living on the weekends. You really thinking that's why I'm alive? 
Listen, that seems time to live my dreams through the things deep inside of me. Risky pass to Danny Rose, who did well to take a tumble then because Trin Coward nearly pinched the ball off him. Go on me, taking me so and sees a growing tree. Y'all get a load of me. Yeah, I'm slow on me. I get the bell like a grocery. I'm on my ground like a spouse. What a ball from Danny Rose on that far side. Maxi man. Nice. Stop it. 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 Stop so in the middle, really well worked, Watford goal, and their lead is restored. It's by Lazar. Every win is a blessing, and every L is a lesson. Finds Josh King, this is King, good save, but the rebound is in, and the flag is up. The goal is given. Work again, Rocky's minus R, that's what he is all about. Quitting was never an option. Here comes the corner. And headed into the face Sar! And the anticipation from Sar, that's a real goal scorer's instinct to drift into that post area. It's where goals are scored. Quitting was never an option. Your contenders for player of the month. There's only really one winner, isn't there? And it's this Mayla Saar. Um, Tommy, what a performance from him in the month of September. Yeah, he's been excellent. And I think, you know, it's probably the obvious decision, but only because of his goals, really. I, I could put a, a very good argument for Josh King with assists and performances and work rate, and also Danny Rose. But, you know, I think Ismail Assar gets it because of he's actually been had the last touch before the ball goes over the line and creates headlines in that, in that respect. A great work rate as well. Yeah, his, his relationship with Kiko works well down the right-hand side. So all over the pitch in defence and in attack, he's, he, he has a vital role, role for the club. But for him to, to get the goals so early on um, is a huge positive for us and hopefully we see many more. Well, hopefully, because my fatty football team has had an absolute shocking start to the season. I've brought him in today. He's come in. So if you can continue that performance, please, for the next month, I'd be very much appreciated. So I can get myself off the bottom of the table. Having a shocker. Do you do fantasy football? No, I don't know. But no, no pressure on Ismailer now, is there? No pressure at Not all. Not only all of the Watford fans, but you've got him in But I needed too. my fantasy football team as <laughs> <Yeah>. well. <laughs> Love that. Uh, right, let's turn our attention back, of course, uh, to the action today then, because uh, a new month means some fresh challenges. And it is Leeds United away at Ellen Road today. The countdown to kick off continues so let's get some thoughts from head coach Cisco Munoz. They have a different style uh, we know what uh, we need to work this game we need to stay a strong mentality we need to stay strong physically and this is the uh, our our challenge this, uh, this week I think uh, we have uh, important uh, Important time for for improve is the important time for uh, building up, and this is the moment also for for uh, for the work very hard about this style. I think it's uh, we can do it. Is the moment for go there with the personality, with character, and uh, we know we know are perfect. We know we know are perfect, but uh, I love uh, my players because they are working very hard and they want to improve. And this is perfect. There we go then, the thoughts from the head coach, Cisco there, ahead of the match for this one. Um, we spoke a little bit earlier, we touched very briefly on Watford and said there's chances because Leeds pull forward, but what have they got to do today? Just keep doing what we've been doing all season or is there a slightly different approach today? No, I think it's a different approach. I think you have to stay solid at the back. You, you have to defend with numbers against Leeds, but then that also opens up the opportunity to attack quickly on the ca on the counter attack. And we have got a lot of pace going forward, and we've got work rate. And we, if we can just get a grip of the middle of the pitch, I think that's going to be the key to it for us today. But 
for me, as before before the whistle goes, I think it's a great opportunity. Just the position that Leeds are in, the way that they're playing, and also for us to come back against Newcastle last week, that gives the players a lift. Mm -hmm. And like we said, they were disappointed with a point. Now go out and get three today. How important is that from a team perspective? When you see them coming off the pitch last week, disappointed with a point. Because there are so many teams that would come from behind, get a point and be happy. But that must be a real positive sign for the strength of that team at the moment and what's going on in that dressing room. Yeah, it is. Uh, and it, but it depend, depends on the characters in that dressing room. Your character of your, of your coach, but also the character of the, uh, of the players. You know, it, it, it's one of those where you, you get into this stage of the season, like we've already mentioned, that can get to 10 points before this second international break which is which would be ideal um, and then you can you can progress from there after you've had that little break and then up before you know it the January windows uh, opens up and then you can add the additions that you need in January you know I look back on my time and it certainly in the Premier League we uh, we had players in the dressing room that were real men we got an awful lot of injuries um, which affected us adversely and then you, you bring certain players in you know we brought in um gravelan who was a, a just a real melt didn't fit in the dressing room <laughs> whatsoever but when then we also brought in Heide helgeson yeah. so it's the characters in the dressing room that, that that take you on and lead you forward and if you've got a nucleus of real good pros which uh, i'd like to think that watford do yeah. then that's the important thing about going to places like leeds so what's the key going to be today we've got to take our chances because we will get some uh, and we've got to keep that energy that we had from the second half in last week. Learn from the mistakes that we made. We were far too open, didn't defend well, lost the, lost the battle in the middle of the pitch in the first half. In the second half, changed the shape and we just went and attacked like we had nothing to lose. And at, at certain points today, we'll have nothing to lose. Just go forward and try and get another goal. Whether that's to increase your lead or to get back into the game, just go and try and score. Absolutely. Tommy, score prediction for today, please. Um, I'd like to think... Three one us. Amazing. Love that. Uh, that is it for Hive Live. Of course, remember, you can get live uh, club commentary 245 via the website today. And of course, reminder, we after the game, we're going to be recording some Hive Live extra. So make sure you join us for that a little bit later on because you'll have that exclusive reaction. Of course, highlights from the game as well. If you're watching this as you're making your way to the women's game today, enjoy it. Best of luck to Watford women, of course, who are playing at Vicarage Road. Uh, and if you're watching this on your way to Ellen Road as well, have a great time on the road visiting that stadium and make sure you make lots of noise for the team and get behind them. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later on.